हिसाब से दस से पंद्रह Uh, incidents for which we have all gathered over here. It is not the first time. Some decades ago, it happened in KM Hospital. A nurse was uh, very badly uh, raped, and she did, the man couldn't kill her, but she was a uh, vegetable for four decades. Sisters looked after her, and uh, ultimately, of course, she succumbed. And here, the worst thing is, they have done a very gruesome things. Even in police and army, they don't try all these gruesome things. But they have tried all horrible ways of, uh, you know, torturing her. That is why it, uh, all our hearts bleed to know that such gruesome things have happened. I can't imagine what must be going through the parents. Parents, uh, every day they must be living and I wish I had, you know, brought her back home. And it is not one day torture. She was tortured for two months and then ultimately they killed her. Such things we just hear in history. That has happened. We're all here seeking justice. We're all here seeking Consolation and understanding of what has happened. Um, and I think first I'd like to invite our senior faculty to speak a few words and address the crowd. Uh, Dr. Bhattarman, if I could please ask you to join us on stage. In uh, addition to what Badwar Madam and Bharti Kulkani Madam has mentioned, we all need to be aware about some legal sections pertaining to our profession not just the medical or nursing, but the overall healthcare professional. Uh, there are certain sections which protect us, but they are not implemented. Like when incidences like what has happened at RJ Kar, FIR needs to be lodged immediately by whether it's the administration or the senior faculties or the dean who is to reach the police station. And the first thing is the FIR has to be lodged. That also gets delayed. Now there have been incidences some 15 years back, minor things in this hospital also. When we used to go, if Kamlakar is here, he'll be knowing, two o'clock at night, we reached the police station. And they refused to lodge an FIR for incidences, not as grievous as what has happened at Arjekar. But even if somebody slaps any doctor or a nurse or healthcare professional, that is a kind of abuse. It is a violence, uh, no matter why it has happened. And that should not be tolerated. So I think we need to have some sessions on uh, legal sections pertaining to what are those uh, penal codes, etc., uh, which the law protects us. And uh, maybe we we'll request the dean to have some sessions in future so that we are aware of our rights. And about the FIR, whether it's today or tomorrow in our practice, we need to be firm 
that the police has to lodge an FIR for any kind of violence or abuse which happens to any healthcare professional. Thank you. For coming together in support of that innocent girl who not only had to suffer in her death, but her family suffered, continues to suffer in this life. It is sad, it is, it is beyond sad. Most of us have daughters ourselves. And when we wake up to such news, it shakes us to the core. Like, like this girl just said that, what do we tell our kids? And we always wonder whether things are going to change to should things change. I was in conversation with a lady from Calcutta. And she was explaining this whole thing and we were discussing the politics of the situation. And she was convinced that there's something underneath, much beyond just the rape itself. That girl had probably uncovered something or this thing. And that lady tells me, kya zarurat tha usko ispe padne ka? Kyun, usko kyun jana tha wa? She could have just minded her own business. And it shook me to the core. What kind of society is this where we are telling our kids don't do right. Look the other way. What kind of living is this where we have no care for any kind of exploitation and we do not protest or we do not or we are not allowed to protest because of the might of somebody. Coming to the second point that I was thinking of, it was a rape, it was a rape of a doctor, it was a rape in a workplace. But I also have another question, is it also the rape of our profession? And it's not just today, it's been happening for quite some time now. Society and since time immemorial, the person who is the weakest is the one who is most exploited. And we are perceived to be the weakest. Why? Because our education has made it such. Just when you are driving in a busy marketplace and you just happen to dash a Mathadi worker up the entire market goes on strike. Are they educated? Is their education better than mine? Yet because of a perceived slight or a perceived injury or a perceived hurt, they all could come together. Then what is our education that makes us islands without bringing us together? Why is it that our education is such that it concentrates on I, but forgets the we? Why is it that as doctors we are only encouraged or, you know, made to realize that I as a doctor have to treat the patient, not we as doctors have to treat a patient. It's not just doctors, it's a team effort. <coughs> but where in our whole education system are we taking care of each other or where is our education system full of those values that support each other? We are perceived to be weak because we stand alone. We see so many ads, you take a matchstick and you can break it, but you have 100 matchsticks together, who can touch you? No one. And yet it takes something like this for a full house over here. Why can't we be together on a daily basis? I find so many incidences where doctors insult other doctors in front of patients and relatives. What do you think that relative is thinking? What do you think that patient is thinking? Do you think he's going to respect you? Do you think he's going to respect our profession? Do you think he's going to respect your knowledge? Fine, we may have our professional differences, but can always be done in private, right? Why in front of the patient? And then, 
because you shouted at that, that doctor is alone. So now the relative takes advantage of that and he in some way or the other with some lewd comment is outraging this one doctor and this doctor doesn't have a support system because people are shouting at her. Whom does she go to? If we can't take care of our own, why do you expect society to take care of anyone of our own? Why is it that an ego comes before taking care of our friends? Why is it that we look at each one of us doctors as competitors and not collaborators? Unless we take care of each other, like Dr. Richa said, we need to make this workplace safer. As an administrator, what can we do? We will have lights everywhere, we will have security everywhere. But if your fellow person cannot keep you safe, cannot make you feel safe, what use is that? I agree with each one of you that the rape was horrible. But just introspect for two minutes. On a daily basis, don't you think you are raping our own profession by behaving in the way all of you behave? And I say this to faculty too. Doesn't it make it our, our obligation? We are a teaching institute. We are teachers and then we are doctors. What are we teaching our children? What are we teaching these kids who come with so many dreams? That you look the other side. You take care of yourself. You be selfish for yourself. This is what, this is how we, we show ourselves. Where are we when these kids need them? How many of us faculty are ready to leave everything at the drop of a hat and come when they really want us? How many of us are there for our children when they cannot tell us that they want us? There are so many times when they, you can see it on your face. Those kids need us. And we as faculty look the other way. Hey, shadi pe jana hai. Bande pe jana hai. Aap sambhalo, hum kal dekhenge. The kid is, you can hear it in her voice. Sir, 40 slok saamne khade hai. She has to break a death. You can hear the shiver in her voice. Nobody comes. And is it not that we are as guilty as anyone else? It is my sincere request. We are all here together. Is it for one moment? Or is, it, or is it for an eternity? Can we all stay together? And we can only stay together if we respect each other. Why would I want to be next to a person who doesn't respect me? Why would I want to talk to a person? I will be in silence. Why do we misbehave with our, with our paramedical staff? Why do we treat our sisters or nurses so differently? Why are they not part of our own fraternity? Dada has rightly said, ego is the death of life and death of ego is life. Our ego is what is killing us. Our ego is what is killing our profession. And we are so short-sighted that we cannot see the simple thing. We are busy blaming others. Like we say, we are blaming the girl for being what she is and that's why the rape is happening. The same way we are busy blaming society for what they are. But what are we doing? We know society has is deranged today. We know values have deranged today. But what are we doing as teachers? Are we doing anything at all? We are, we are teaching medicine without teaching the values of medicine. We are teaching medicine without teaching the ethics of medicine. We are teaching medicine without teaching the morality of medicine. We know that this kind of disrespect is happening in our, in our juniors and in our peers and we are silent to it. Are we not Members of the same crime too. We are all educated. Does education give us nothing but egos? I ask this question to each one of you. Why is it that our ego comes forward only in front of juniors? Why do you need ego to prove a point? I think things change when change comes from within. I think things change when we learn to respect each other. 
kind of disrespect we shall out to each other. Just think about it. We don't do it to our servants. We take care of them so much. And we make our juniors work for 12 hours, 14 hours. You all know what it is. I don't have to stand on a podium and put this on. Why can't we be there for And I don't know when it changed. We've gone through medicine. We've done it. I'm not saying molly coddling or medicine. We've done it. But we always had a support. My registrar, my houseman used to come. Rajiv, you do one thing. You work all night. You do this word. I'll do this word. We'll meet at 8 o'clock for, for breakfast. Where has that camaraderie gone? Where has that oneness gone? Do not expect these things. Today it is rape, tomorrow there will be another violence. This will keep on happening because we are perceived to be single, we are perceived to be weak and because we don't stand with each other and we do not respect each other in front of us. I know what happened in Kolkata is bad. We can do something here for our own selves. We can't change what's happening in Kolkata. But we can definitely do something here. It tabhi bhi hota tha, hota rehega. Kyu? Kya 30 saal pehle aapke paas mobile tha, tabhi nahi tha na? Wo to change ho gaya. To hamari adat kyu nahi badal? Okay, we as seniors have worked 24 hours, 36 hours, but we were just two, three of us. Now there are 24 of you in a damn batch. And the number of patients has not increased. Work has not increased. But why should you be working hard? And it's not the working hard that troubles you. Very honestly, if I talk to any JR1 and you talk to your JR1, you'll find out or to JR, anybody, any senior. It's not the working hours that trouble them. Is the way they are treated. They will give their life for you. As long as you treat people right. It's my only request. I keep telling you all again and again. Do not expect people to respect you. And this is going to happen. As long as we are not there for each other. As long as we are going to remain selfish. I think the only thing education has made us selfish. I have become I. We have forgotten the we. And unless we get back the we. In each one of us. Unless we start teaching the values of medicine and imbibing those values in each one of you all, nothing can change. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to say anything?